should be live still testing my sound and everything takes too many clicks to go live have to automate the process ideally Yes, yeah, so go check out bodychaos.com if you haven't done so already. There's a lot of tools. Uh, check them out. Let me know what you think. So we'll jump into development. So I have this uh, data from a Kegel competition. see how long I can uh, get away without uh, using a robot for programming probably not long anyway, we have this new project it's called the uh, seizure fuzz that's only because I need to have a limit of how many LinkedIn likes uh, 26 uh, characters of URLs before it starts shortening them into funny things. So I want to avoid that. Let's run this application quickly. Am I getting errors already? No, it's because it's already running, isn't it? Run it again. Okay, so that's how it looks like so far. We had, uh, I think, two sessions that we spend on it um, in this one so we don't have a option to scroll this is a fairly large data set to remember how uh, big is it no well, data is on my desktop so not very big can't be too big then can it It's uh, 26, 27 uh, gigabytes. That shouldn't be too bad. So I just have all this gazillion of windows uh, open on, was it one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> essentially five different screens. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's get into it. So it's currently what the tool uh, looks like. You can select your EG ID. Now that ID. Yeah, that looks like a seizure there. It's actually an interesting one. What does it look like? So in here you can uh, select your uh, EG ID. In this case, uh, 100, what is it, 110 seconds of uh, EG data. You can select your channels. Sorry, I'm not displaying all the channels. There's uh, other tools that display all the channels. You can see examples. This one just uh, displaying one uh, channel at a time just to... You know, uh, we'll be doing more uh, with this. This actually looks a lot like a seizure. The reason this is 110 seconds, so you have those uh, 18 labels of uh, probably seizure. 
can open the original um, test CSV. It's actually uh, no, sorry, not tested. Uh, train CSV. Yeah, about seven and a half uh, megabytes. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So say when we go uh, six or four, wherever it is. Looks like a seizure to me that's why it's probably be a good example to to probably have as a default uh, loading by default obviously it's impossible to search for anything in here a one five one seven one seven nine six right so we have yeah they're all labeled as seizure there were only a three experts in this case five that's what i was yeah i was mentioning it uh, the other time i looked at the dust dust and it's a bit odd so you have uh, each one of those entries in the train csv file are meant to be 50 second long and then you have this uh, offset to it and it's that the uh, number there that will tell you in seconds what the offset is like so in my application theory when you do that it will select just the a 50 second window so it should be 58 to 166 that doesn't make sense that's over a hundred so we need to fix that but the point is Yeah, it does the offset to begin with. They're heavily overlaid on top of one another. So if... Uh, yeah, the 62... Yeah, I'm not convinced. Uh, I think it's just displaying the same data all the time. It's just changing the x-axis. Uh, 6 of 4. And this one, you can... Can you type in this? No. Oops. Yeah, the selector is not great, but uh, you get the drift. You can't expand it or anything. Anyway, so you have those. Uh, this is the type of labels that we have. We have seizure, a GPD was a generalized uh, something something. I think that would be lateral. Should have an explanation for all this. So we have our structure. Yeah, that's the, that's the description. Yeah, just weird that the annotations say in this case were done uh, in most cases by three reviewers and they had the 100% agreement rate between them in terms of the labels. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six labels. The sixth one is the AVA. In this case, they have 100% agreement, but then with the same, um, oops, with the same data segment, this uh, 604 at the end, you also have a couple of labels, a couple of epochs, uh, 50 second segments that were labeled by five experts. So I'm not sure why the whole five just didn't look at the whole thing, considering. 
again this would be um, 50 plus 62 second segment I don't know why it's essentially the overlap is very heavy I don't know why so each one of those will be a 50 second window the first one will be starting at time 0 and the second one time 2, time 4, 6, so on and so forth so it's just uh, duplicating the data it's essentially it's fudging, fudging the, the classic fudging of a data set where you try to duplicate more a uh, create more data when you don't actually have it all the labels are essentially in all these cases are the same anyway it's not clear why there were like three reviewers for some of them and five for others so you see essentially in these two cases a uh, three cases four reviewers said it's a seizure and one said it's other so no not the hundred percent agreement yeah this is an interesting case again you have a high duplication rate the um, whole data will be 74 seconds yeah, it's hard for me to actually find those in the drop down menu it's also after a while it's becoming a uh, quite unresponsive so obviously not quite ready to be published I uh, have to make sure the expert consensus is actually updated when you select this one the idea originally the reason it's a drop down it's an input is that you can sell a uh, filter the EEG IDs so you can just display uh, one of the labels like all the EEG IDs for one specific label uh, that doesn't work at the moment uh, once you select an EEG ID then you have those uh, different offsets and again just seem to be highly a uh, duplicated data essentially those in between would not be necessary you might get away with you know um, offset 0 and offset 18 because each of those is 50 seconds so you really don't need those in between uh, because this will be 0 to 50 this will be 2 to 52 so it's essentially the same the same time window then 4 to 54 6 to 56 yeah done no need no need you can just have the first and the last so you will have 0 to 50 and then 18 to what is it 68 that should be plenty <laughs> so essentially it looks to me like they're just trying to create more uh, data points when uh, when there's actually in the data itself this one here for example i understand the rationale behind it yeah so th this is all the same a uh, data segment if you look at the raw file you just have uh, was it 50 plus uh, 62 whatever it is but then you have a lot of like duplicates of the same thing so in reality you could have had a 0 to 50 and then say this uh, uh, if you need some overlap of 10 seconds so you have 40 to 90 and that will cover it all so instead of having these 18 entries it's really just uh, two so ho hopefully it's clear what i'm trying to say if um, by any chance if anyone looked at this data set and i totally misunderstand what the data set is doing do let me know I should have a link to the data it's on Kaggle HMC no yeah harmful brain yeah this one so put the a source in the description there they will write the description in a sec yeah let's just pop well might as well do it now we have the canvas so eventually the plan is to 
continue with this data set. We're not, uh, we just take the data as is, we can change it um, and use the labels um, to eventually do a um, classifier. We'll be using fuzzy logic, so it's explainable AI stuff. We don't want any black boxes, we want to actually know what is it doing. And then, ah, the data also contains these spectrograms. There's like 11,000 of them, and they are 10 minutes long. So let's see yeah, an example of how not to store your data. Um, yeah, so essentially those should display 50 seconds, each one of those sub IDs, and then you will have Yeah, we're still testing this. There's a few interesting examples there. That's obviously, they, some of them have just crazy noise. Um, so I'm not sure one way to go about to see if you actually have ECG. Sometimes, I mean, the ECG electrode could be off, um, but everything else might be working correctly. That is uh, possible. However, if you see a very noisy ECG like this, this is probably a strong indication that something that other things are very wrong in this recording. So yeah, so if you see stuff like this in your ECG channel, it's highly likely that if you select, yeah, if you um, if you look at the EEG recordings, that you'll see some uh, high noise there as well, which is kind of indicative of problems. So might start uh, filtering this data that way. I just suspect that by the time we filter, and when I say filter, I'm not saying, you know, we won't be taking something is, um, you know, really bad and trying to improve it. I'm saying like filtering is in getting rid of it. Uh, and something just happened to the tool. Did I get an error or something? It's thinking about it. Yeah, once you go down the list, it's becoming less responsive, which is obviously not ideal. Uh, hopefully, um, one of the bots, the uh, GitHub Copilot or GPT-4 can fix all this for us. So I haven't published this yet, um, just running it uh, locally. There's many other tools that are published on uh, bionichaos.com. Go check them out and let me know what you think. Let's check the chat if we have any questions. More than happy to dive into them. They are good questions. And no, there's nothing. Okay, let's continue development. And yeah, if a human doesn't want to talk, we have to talk to a robot. It's not ideal. It's, it is second best at the moment. But... Uh, Um, let's try Copilot first. Just go in the chat. Let's get rid of that. Hey, can you add the source uh, reference at the bottom of a page with a link? I'll provide the link in a sec. It's obviously a simple task for Copilot. So we have a body at the end of the body section of the HTML. We'll add a reference. Uh, 
the link is this Kaggle competition. And we use oh come on. Let's close this for a sec. We use this bit for the text. Let's see if it works. Yep, opens another window. That's great. I will call it the data source. That should be fine. Okay, what else quickly can we do? The yeah, there's a big problem of the EG ID becoming less responsive when you go when you scroll down this list. It's not great. Uh, we have that uh, we want this one. I think it's a good example because I'm pretty sure uh, there is an actual more classic looking, you know, like a textbook um, lookalike um, seizure in that uh, segment. So I want to use it as default. So for that, we use a uh, start a new chat. We go use this uh, workspace uh, handle in uh, Copilot. So it actually looks everywhere, not just this file. For EEG ID, uh, where can we set the default value that loads when the page is loading the first time? Yes, it's uh, determining workspace structure, deciding which uh, a files to look at and found five references. I don't know why. And yes, it's just going for the index HTML. No, I just suspected that there is something in the script JS. And yes, it did look at the script JS. So I do. So I am confident that it's, uh, um, you know, giving you a legit response in the GID. I mean, it was biased because my mouse cursor was uh, already there. There could be another reason that it's uh, just uh, uh, giving me that. And let's pop it in there quickly. Right. No, actually, yeah. So the ID, EG ID. Is the ID that will be used in JavaScript as well. This is, by the way, not the uh, tutorials about the uh, HTML. I think uh, those, these tutorials probably be obsolete with uh, LLMs. Because uh, the LLM um, happily and quickly covering all those basic, uh, uh, basic stuff. So you, I don't think you need tutorials anymore. Um, ba, 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 here's the blah, 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 blah. default value. Do we have default value? So we have each ID five times. Right, document, get element by ID, change function, get it spot. Ooh, the question where does this bit of code goes? A how to update to include the default value for EGID?
a poplet drop down yeah i don't know why sometimes maybe it's a linux uh, thing that uh, those are not uh, links they just text sometimes they are links so I'm, so I'm saying it because yeah it's really great when they are links you can just uh, A click on it, it will go to the function that needs a changing poplet drop down. Etching. Yeah, we don't need that log anymore. Can get rid of it. Drop down ID option object ID context sub ID. Okay, 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 okay. Here. Okay, if drop down ID. weird okay this is the entire function isn't it so might as well yeah we don't want to be just need to make sure we are in the correct function and we're just gonna replace the whole lot test it later so this will be still the first uh, value Uh, because default value is not being populated we do want the default value to be can we just do that Okay, that works. Right, so that's our default uh, value. And somewhere, yeah, down the list. Doesn't really matter. But to make sure the seizure, so when selecting, okay, let's do another one. Yeah, let's start a new chat because it's a new issue. We don't want the previous response to influence uh, this one. A workspace. We need to make sure when selecting the segment, the expert consensus uh, is uh, updated. Uh, first of all, we need to swap uh, places. The consensus should come after the EG sub ID because we have a label for each sub ID, not the general ID. So you have multiple IDs and then the label, like in this table, you have it for each uh, each one of those. So this is the label and you have it for essentially, a, what is it, that number ID, six or ending with six or four and then point one, point two, point three. Right, let's let's swap uh, between them the order. It's the expert consensus Oops. can go below. Can go here. Um, to make sure this expert make sure that the expert consensus is being updated when uh, the EG ID oh come on 
Yeah, it's sending it too quickly because I speak too slowly. Um, right, so this is wrong. Looks, it looked at five references. So still we have a workspace handle. So we'll look at the whole code, not just the, where currently the mouse cursor is. Let's do another prompt and actually complete it this time. Let's actually talk to a GPT for a sec. Come on. What? Hey, okay, a couple of things. We actually need the expert consensus to be updated when we select a different EEG segment. We need it to show the label associated with that segment. The label is in train CSV file. Let's pop it into Copilot. If you haven't checked bionicchaos.com, go do so. There's a lot of interesting tools and blogs. And don't forget to provide your feedback after you checked it out. Okay, let's see what it said. So I want to update the expert consensus dropdown when the different EEG segment is selected. That's right. So in our script.js, we're already there. When the EEG or sub ID changes, you should fetch the corresponding label. Here is a rough. Why is it a rough idea? Why is it not uh, the actual? We had that have it in page and update chart. Yes, that's what it's recommending. We have EGID sub ID, that's correct. Yeah, 
Okay, let's pop it in here. Okay, that's the same. Fetch the offset directly from the selected sub ID. That's fetch the label from selected the EGID and sub ID. Okay, let's get rid of it for a sec. Yeah, we need to change the flask up as well. Okay, so how are we changing the code based on the previous response? So you generate the whole function, we just need to make sure sometimes it's putting um missing missing bits. Let's change the chart. It seems to be the same. It seems to be the whole the whole thing. Just make it smaller. Sorry for that, because yeah, we're not we try not to actually focus on the on the code itself. Uh, we're trying to do the overall thing, 168 line, 182. Okay, so we have that one. Ooh, now it's slower. And we're getting an error. Because get label it did tell us to get uh, to change the uh, backend as well the get label in particular specifically yeah I don't know why this is not a link would be nice if it was get label by the way we're only using robots because uh, humans are way too busy but if you do want to chat i could even bring you on air get label get label we don't have it do we no we don't Just get label right. So we do need to add it. Get label. Uh, that details. I forgot what the structure of the code. Okay, 
we do have a data util sprite, another Python script. So this one. Okay, so it's already suggesting um, um, a get label function fetches a label for given each EEG and, a, and subject identifier. Try. Yep, it's retrieving that from train CSV. Looks legit. And uh, returning either label not found or the label, I would imagine. Yeah, label zero. It's assuming it's an array and it didn't actually work. No such file directory. What? Of course there is. A get label. So this is all uh, happening in the back end. Get patients IDs works okay. Let's try this. It's a folder thing, it can't find the file. No, it's not in the data path. It's in another folder. It should be doing that. A DF is not used. No, <laughs> should be right. It may get label function in uh, that it is as responsible. No, I do want to use them. <laughs> Don't just remove it. Don't just remove it. Yeah, the get label should also have a DF in it. DF in it, DF in it. Get label, it's already using it over here. Get label. DF in it.
fix this one first. Just select the whole code and do the workspace as well because we need to eventually update the data utils uh, Python code as well. Yes, having trouble reading that file. It shouldn't be a problem because it's already read elsewhere. Hey, can we just do it in the same way as for the previous functions? It's not looking at the whole code. Okay, did it fix it? There's only one way to know is to boop, 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 run it They're yeah, reading the CSV file, filtering the data frame, and returning the corresponding label. Okay, that obviously didn't work. Hey, can you update this based on the previous response? Errors. Boop, 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 boop. Should we do something more fun and get back to this uh, later? Or should we just continue banging our head, heads? Okay, let's continue <laughs> begging. <laughs> uh, bang on. Okay, it should be <laughs> simple. Why do I have a feeling GPT-4 will be able to deal with this? Yeah, let's just uh, a pop this in. Can take uh, longer prompts. Can actually use the Tokenizer. Tokenizer. It's a good name, isn't it? Let's tokenize it. 
Okay, when we have uh, 2,000 tokens, it should be fine. The Flask application, 3,000 data utils. Three and a half. That's the structure of this data set. Two, six thousand. Do we need a info and stuff? Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. What? What? So yeah. Just uh, listening to some uh, podcast. I don't remember the name but essentially saying uh, if I understood correctly that uh, whatever is in the beginning and the end of the prompt that's what uh, essentially has more likely chance to be picked up by the um, model anyway so we have this uh, eight and a half thousand tokens should be not too much for GPT-4 to handle. Ah, we forgot the errors. Let's pop in the... Let's clear this. Clear the terminal, run this again. Yeah, we get this Control shift c error. I'm getting the following error above. I shared all the codes. We have access to the entire project. Uh, can we fix this error first? It's to do with updating the expert consensus value when a different uh, EG ID and sub ID segment of raw data was selected. Yep. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's also try out really losing my voice and the humans are not talking so i might just use the bot just to rest my vocal cords oops have to edit that out if uh, this ever turns into a video highly unlikely clear all right the error you're encountering key error sub id in your flask app happens because the data frame df in the get label function doesn't recognize the column sub id this is likely because the column in your csv file is actually named eeg sub id as seen in your train.csv metadata structure here's how you can fix this one correct the column name in the get label function replace sub id with eeg sub id this change will align the column name with what's in your csv file two Update the request parameter. Make sure that the parameter passed in the URL for sub ID aligns with what the function expects. Since you're using EEG sub ID in your data frame, the URL parameter should also be EEG sub ID. Here's the updated get label function in your Flask app. Python at app.route slash get label. EEG ID equals request.args.get EEG ID. EEG sub ID equals request.args.get EEG sub ID.
So this one is not referring to, it is referring to data utils, but it doesn't have a get label. So I think we can get uh, rid of it, can we? In data utils, the get label function, can we get rid of it? I'm pretty sure it's a yes. Now we're still getting an error, a different error, still an error. Hey, this is what I get in the terminal. Okay, can you fix that? Clear. Got it. The error you're encountering now. Type error. Int argument must be a string. A bytes-like object or a real number, not none type, suggests that either EEG ID or EEG sub ID or both is none. This typically happens when the expected query parameters are not passed in the URL, or the names used in request.args.get don't match the query parameter names in the URL. To resolve this, let's do a couple of things. One, check the front end code. Ensure that the request made to slash get label includes both EEG ID and EEG sub ID as query parameters. The URL should look something like slash get label EG XXX and EG sub ID equals YYY. Two, safeguard against none values in backend. Modify the get label function to handle cases where EEG ID or EEG sub ID might be none. Okay, okay, okay. The, yeah, the thing about it still doesn't work. Uh, so, I mean, the data is being displayed, which is great, but still getting an error. Uh, the problem, I'm pretty sure, is... Well, first of all, most of the time, the label for same EEG IDs is always the same anyway. But yes, there might be a chance that it is not, so we still need to address it in the code. But currently, yeah, I'm getting this... Uh, What's the default value? Yeah, 6 or 4 is the one that has something that looks like a seizure. Yes, yeah, so it's working okay most of the time. The expert consensus is not being updated. The value is not being retrieved properly and I'm getting the following error. Error, error. Do I need to speak with uh, American accent, do I? how to update the code. We would like to move on and uh, develop it further. We will uh, need to load the spectrogram, spectrograms from the data set. And then uh, start uh, training a fuzzy logic classifier to classify between different labels yep
it looks like you're encountering a 400 bad request error when calling slash get label, suggesting that either EEG ID or EEG sub ID is missing or invalid. Also, the expert consensus field is showing as undefined in your requests to slash fetch EEG data, which might be related to the front end not handling the received data correctly. Let's address these issues step by step. One, verify query parameters in front end. Ensure that when making a request to slash get label, both EEG ID and EEG sub ID are included and valid. Check the JavaScript code where the slash get label request is made. Ensure that the values for EEG ID and EEG sub ID are correctly retrieved and appended to the query string. Two, handle undefined expert consensus. This issue likely occurs because the front end JavaScript isn't handling the received label data correctly or the label data isn't being sent correctly from the back end. Check the part of your JavaScript code where you update the expert consensus field based on the response from slash get label. Make sure it correctly sets the value even if the back end returns an error or an empty value. Three, implementing spectrogram loading and fuzzy logic classifier. Once you've resolved the current issues, you can proceed to load spectrogram data. Ensure you have a route in your Flask app to handle spectrogram data loading. For the fuzzy logic classifier, you'll need to define your fuzzy sets, membership functions, and rules based on the features extracted from the EEG and spectrogram data. Libraries like scikit-fuzzy in Python can be helpful. The fuzzy classifier would take features from your data as input and output a classification label. Make sure to test and validate this classifier thoroughly with your data set. Let's also clean up the error handling in your slash slash get label function in the Flask app to ensure it's robust. Python app.route slash get label, def get label, eg id equal request.args.egid, eg sub id equals request.args.eg sub id. If not eg or not eg sub id, return jsonify error, missing eg e or eg sub id. 400, try, eg id and eed, eg sub eg sub d, accept value error. Return JSONify, error invalid EEG ID or EEG sub ID, 400. Rest of the code remains the same. Finally, ensure you handle any possible errors or edge cases both on the front end and back end to make the application more robust and user friendly. Once these issues are resolved, you can move forward with the next stages of your project, such as loading spectrogram data and implementing the fuzzy logic classifier.
Okay, we're back in business. It is working again. So now when you select is the default one is still that 604 that uh, has something that looks like a seizure. All these 18 labels have the same uh, a label. Hey, can you explain the code structure specifically? Sorry, can you explain the data structure specifically focusing on the fact that each uh, label is for a 50 second raw EG data? But then the sub ID offsets seem to be very small. Yep. The dataset structure you've described is quite interesting and a bit complex due to the way the data is segmented and labeled. Let's break it down. One, EEG data structure, EEG recording. Each EEG recording is identified by an EEG ID. This ID represents a full EEG recording session for a patient. Subsamples of EEG data. Within each EEG recording, there are subsamples of data, each 50 seconds long. These subsamples are identified by EEG sub ID. The EEG label offset seconds indicates the time offset from the start of the EEG recording to the beginning of the subsample. Spectrogram data. Corresponding to each EEG recording, there is also spectrogram data. Spectrograms provide a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies in the EEG signal as they vary with time. The spectrogram ID corresponds to the entire spectrogram recording, while spectrogram sub-ID refers to specific parts of the spectrogram, with spectrogram label offset seconds indicating the time offset similar to the EEG data. 2. Labeling of EEG data. Label per 50-second subsample. The critical aspect here is that the annotations or labels provided by experts are for each 50-second subsample of EEG data, EEG sub-ID. This means that the experts have reviewed each 50-second segment and provided a label for it. Small subset of labeled data. The reason the labeled data set might seem small is likely because the labeling is intensive and is done on these 50-second segments, not on the entire recording. In real-world scenarios, especially in medical data, getting labeled data is often a challenge due to the time and expertise required for accurate labeling. 3. Application of labels. Multiple labels per EEG recording. An entire EEG recording, EEG ID, can have multiple labels because each 50-second segment, EEG sub-ID, within it might exhibit different characteristics. For example, some segments might show seizure activity while others might not. 4. Data utilization. For analysis, when analyzing the data, you will likely be looking at these 50-second segments and using their corresponding labels to train models, validate hypotheses, or conduct analyses. For model training, in machine learning applications, each 50-second segment becomes an individual sample for training. The model learns to classify or predict the label for unseen 50-second segments of EEG data. 5. Data Challenges complexity and overlapping samples, handling EEG data is complex due to its high dimensionality and the fact that different segments of the same recording can exhibit vastly different characteristics. Expert disagreement. 
There might be cases where experts disagree on labels for the same EEG segment, reflecting the subjective nature of interpreting EEG data. Understanding this structure is crucial for appropriately processing the data, training models, and interpreting results. The key is to remember that the labels apply to specific segments, 50 seconds long, of a continuous EEG recording. I just realized something, yeah, another uh, potential indication of how bad uh, this uh, data set is, is when you load this default EG ID, select your sub ID, the all uh, seizure labels. This is what you get on different EG electrodes. Looks a lot like a seizure, but this is really zoomed out, so we don't uh, see the details. We'll be looking at the details later. Yeah, you get this slowing down of, uh, so it looks like spiking, and then it's also slowing down, which is a good indicator. But, then you look at the ECG, and it has the same um, structure to it, uh, the same uh, overview, overall uh, amplitude, which is highly unusual. <laughs> so, so this makes me think that it's more likely to be um, artifact. And yes, we need to look at the details of it, but uh, yeah, just highly unusual. The ECG seems to be still there, but then uh, this artifact should be coming from the brain, uh, not the heart, if it is a seizure. So in this case, it will be either uh, most likely to be muscle activity. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a chance that there is a cardiological uh, cardio event, but uh, that affecting the brain recordings. But yes, you don't expect to see ECG in your EEG. That's a really not good uh, sign. So, yeah, uh, most likely just to be a bad uh, data point. Also, we need to make sure the patient ID is updated in the same way as the expert consensus. So when we select a different uh, EEG ID and sub ID, the patient ID should get updated. The original idea there was that um, those will be inputs and uh, when selecting a patient, the EEG IDs will get uh, filtered to show data from only a specific patient or a specific label. However, that doesn't seem to work. If you have any ideas of how to fix it, do let know. and keep it light. Yep.
You've made some astute observations about your EEG dataset. Let's address them. One, similar patterns in EEG and ECG. The similarity you're observing between EEG and ECG patterns is intriguing. Usually, EEG, brain activity, and ECG, heart activity, should exhibit distinctly different patterns. The similarity could indeed suggest an artifact or some form of interference in the EEG data. This is a common issue in EEG recordings where various types of interference, like electrical, muscular, ocular artifacts, can affect the data quality. Two, analyzing artifacts. It's essential to closely examine these patterns to determine if they're genuine brain activity or artifacts. If it's an artifact, especially one that mimics seizure-like activity, it could significantly impact the analysis and model training. Advanced signal processing techniques or consulting with a clinical expert might be necessary to discern this. Three, updating patient ID dynamically. Regarding the dynamic update of the patient ID based on EEG ID and sub-ID, the front end should make a request to the back end whenever a new EEG ID and sub-ID are selected. The back end then responds with the corresponding patient ID. Here's a potential way to implement this. Front end, when an EEG ID and sub ID are selected, trigger a JavaScript function to make an AJAX request to a new Flask route passing the selected EEG ID and sub ID. Back end, Flask, create a new route that receives the EEG ID and sub ID, looks up the corresponding patient ID from the data set, and returns it as a response. Front end, on receiving the response, update the patient ID field in your form or interface. Four, code implementation. Flask route example. Python at app.routes get patient ID, def get patient ID, eeg ID request.args.get eeg ID, sub ID equals request.args get sub ID. Code to fetch patient ID based on eeg ID and sub ID, patient ID equals tire fetched patient ID, return JSONify, patient ID equal patient ID. JavaScript AJAX call example. Enhance JavaScript function update patient ID sub ID fetch slash get patient uscot ID at age and and sub ID equals sub ID. Then response equals response.json. Then document dot get element by a patient ID value dot patient score ID dot catch error console dot error error error. Five investigating artifact versus seizure. Zooming in. Since you mentioned that the overview looks like a seizure, but you need to zoom in for details, it's vital to analyze the data at different scales. Sometimes, what looks like an artifact in a zoomed-out view could be genuine EEG activity when examined closely. Comparative analysis. Compare the questionable EEG patterns with known artifact patterns and seizure patterns. This might involve looking at different frequency bands, amplitudes, and morphologies. 6. Data quality concerns. If you continue to find unusual patterns or artifacts that mimic brain activity, this could be a significant concern for the dataset's reliability. In such cases, documenting these findings and considering their impact on your analysis and models is essential. You might need to employ additional pre-processing steps to filter out such artifacts or reconsider the dataset's use. Remember, EEG data interpretation is complex and often requires a blend of signal processing expertise and clinical knowledge. Consulting with a neurologist or a clinical expert in EEG interpretation could provide valuable insights, especially when distinguishing between genuine brain activity and artifacts.
we have an option to add a channel so then we can compare one of the EEG to the ECG uh, side by side or should we just continue to the spectrograms I just suspect the whole yeah there's something wrong with this data set uh, altogether there's a lot of uh, weird things I can give, do a summary but I found the uh, pretty much three uh, at least two or three uh, major red uh, red flags I keep finding red flags like this one ECG is there uh, the fact that it's inverse should not matter it's, it's fine but then yeah, this is what's happening on the left side of the head and this is on the right it's just a major artifact and you have um, yeah I have a lot of trouble with those uh, labels yes we will have a 64 yeah 64 uh, sorry 54 seconds in this data and this is because and they just overlap they're essentially the same it's 0 to 50 2 to 52 and 4 to 54 uh, second windows so as you can tell the uh, almost was it 99.999 percent uh, overlap so I don't know why they're even there seems like a fudging data thing trying to make uh, big data out of a small uh, data set don't like it Yeah, in this case yeah th th this one is legit because uh, for this one we should be showing uh, 0 to 50 so it should go up to up to here and there's a label for it it's uh, labeled as uh, LPD a uh, lateralized periodic discharges so that's okay and um, essentially th all those are redundant and then you could have say you know if you need a little bit of overlap you can have um, eight uh, eight seconds of overlap and this one would be essentially 42 to what's 50 plus 42 uh, 90 uh, seconds so it'll cover the whole lot It's still labeled as uh, LPD. Yeah, so we might need an expert for this one. I don't know who those uh, experts are. Ah, the third uh, red flag was, uh, yes, yeah, so if we look at uh, the original uh, train file, training file. So all the labels yeah so this one here it has all this uh, overlaps in it that are uh, redundant you could have just kept uh, well the first and the last one Yeah, and the other thing was uh, how these labels are made. Six or four, yeah, this one. So in this case, uh, three experts uh, label this as seizure. That's fine, and you had 100% agreements, but then three is not a large number. I mean, uh, three is, would be like the absolute uh, minimum, because generally you will have... Uh, a two and if there's a disagreement between the labels you show it to a third one and then they come to some sort of consensus um, it's actually not 
how you come to a consensus so they just do consensus by majority majority vote they have to kind of yeah convince each other so yeah in this case so this label there Where's the current one and why is it not showing the current position? Okay, no, that's not it. 604. Right. And then you have this. Um, so that's 771. Yeah, this 771 it will have uh, 14 offsets. And yes, they were labeled as other. But interestingly, six experts still said it's a seizure. And eight said it's other. So does it mean... Yeah, let's check the description again. Yeah, so that's the voting, the count of annotated votes for a given brain activity class. So those are the the different types. Yeah, so in this case, that's the ECG looks like. Okay, we need to make sure this um, display is always uh, locked to 50 seconds. Patient ID is not updating properly. It's not changing. Yeah, EG ID is not being used. Just say update. Yeah, based on previous conversation is good. Sometimes it uh, discards what uh, previously was discussed. Yeah, but this one is still not being used. Uh, this still need to be updated, particularly the EEG ID and the EEG sub ID are not actually being used. Uh, I like how it's just uh, getting rid of it. Yeah, GPT-4 doesn't do that. So if I mention it, I still want to use it.
if I mention EG ID and EG sub ID, did you just remove uh, them from the code? Um, that's not cool. I do need them. So we want to retrieve the patient ID based on which uh, sub ID uh, segment of EG was uh, actually selected. We need to know which patient this data is coming from. Okay, it's bringing them back. Now we're getting an error. Okay, patient ID is not actually being. I think we need to update the JavaScript as well. Do we need to update other parts of the code as well, like the JavaScript? Yeah, that's the default uh, default EG ID. And where do we actually change the code? Hey, we are lazy how to update the code based on previous responses. Yeah, I want to fetch the patient IDs. Pop like drop down. Because that we're just updating the first time around. Then we need to do it again. I don't know why those are not links. <laughs> they're meant to be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're designed to be links um so we're changing the inputs do those functions? I don't think so. It does kind of make sense. Yeah, originally, uh, okay. Yeah, we might need to bring in the big guns, the ChatGPT, 
and do this again should we start a new chat so the, the gpt is better the this implementation of the gpt the open ai is better as keeping overall context yeah because we just want to sort this out once and for ever data structure okay now can we focus on how the input drop down menus are being populated and displayed and what happens when we change the values so originally the idea was that you can filter the data based on the label type or the patient that doesn't work at the moment we do need to make sure however that when we select a different uh, sub id and id of the eg data file We need to make sure that the con expert consensus and patient ID and all other parameters are being modified. The data should be retrieved correctly from the train CSV file. As you can see from the structure of the data set, we have other values in the train CSV file. Can you help me update the code? I need specific uh, code. Yep. In this case, you just see some uh, noise to begin with, and you have something that yeah, potentially looks like the R peaks in ECG. Play drop down on page load fetch and display related data update backend end points yeah that needs to update the front end as well that your event list now for the EGID and sub ID drop downs When these values change, you should fetch and update the related dropdowns accordingly. That sounds legit. Let's try it out. Obviously, I can't search. Well, I can't search, it's just not as convenient. Yeah, so it's every time you ask for something, it's uh, very likely to add additional functions instead of just fixing existing code. It's a bit unfortunate.
we're not giving up on this data set just yet. We'll have the review tool. The next thing will be visualizing the spectrogram data. I don't think I can generate it myself. I would have just generated the spectrograms myself because I did review some of the examples. They also don't look quite right. But we'll just have to load them. Uh, yeah, just have to pass this uh, CSV file correctly. So someone someone must have already done this, obviously, but uh, I don't have access to to it. There's some example code on the Kaggle competition site, but I don't necessarily trust it. So we'd like to understand the data ourselves anyway. We we'll kind of have to do this first. Yeah, the problem with this thing, you end up with too many functions. Yeah, every time you ask for something, it's generating a new one. Instead of fixing existing code. You're still getting an error. No, we're not getting an error. Yes, we are getting an error. So I, I didn't implement the, the code correctly. So the safest thing to do is to pop in the JavaScript and the Python code into the LLM again and give it 
also this error code. Yeah, get patient's ID, obviously. There's a problem with it. With it. It made it simpler, but you would think is better. All right. It looks like you've made some great progress with your code. However, there's a small issue that needs fixing. The 404 error for the slash get patient IDs endpoint indicates that you haven't defined this route in your Flask app. To resolve this, you should either remove the call to populate dropdown get patient IDs patient ID in your JavaScript code or create a corresponding endpoint in your Flask app. If you want to create the endpoint, here's how you can do it. Flask backend changes. Add an endpoint to fetch patient IDs. This endpoint will return a list of unique patient IDs based on the EEG data available. Python at app.root slash get patient IDs, def get patient IDs, d equals data utils dot read CSV, OS path, joy to path, train dot CSV, patient IDs, df patient ID dot unique, toe list, return JSONify patient IDs. Reviewing the JavaScript code. If you decide to keep the call to populate the patient ID dropdown, ensure that your JavaScript code correctly handles this. If you decide to remove it, ensure to also remove any related functionality that depends on this dropdown. Other notes. One, error handling. Make sure to handle errors gracefully in both your JavaScript and Python code. This will improve the user experience and make debugging easier. Two, loading data efficiently. If your data set is large, consider optimizing the way you load and process data in your Flask app to improve performance. Three, front-end interactions. Ensure that your front-end correctly responds to user interactions such as changing drop-down values, and that it displays the appropriate data. Four, testing. Thoroughly test your application to ensure that all components are working as expected. This includes testing the front-end interactions, data fetching, and chart updates. By making these adjustments, your EEG data viewer should work more reliably and efficiently. So the first time around we get no errors, which is great. We have this default thing that looks like a seizure, but then I'm not sure because the ECG also has something that looks like a seizure, <laughs> which is highly suspicious. As as we know, ECG shouldn't have any seizures in it. So it's either something is really wrong. We'll have to test this. The other thing I'm trying to make sure is that yeah, when you select a specific sub ID or a specific ID, it doesn't matter. We get the seizures being updated correctly. The label being updated correctly. Maybe, maybe not. Oops. Just pop it into GPT four with the corresponding code. Something is really wrong. We added a new function and changed an existing one. 
So it looks like we added a new function and changed an existing one. The tool is working okay on first page load. But later when uh, selecting a different EG ID or different EG sub ID, I'm getting the error above. So the recent change uh, broke the code. How do we fix it? Yep. Yes, yeah, so we change get patient ID and we also it's something yeah, something silly. I want to get into uh, displaying the spectrograms here as well doing some uh, processing and training a fuzzy logic classifier obviously by the look of how we are progressing today that is not happening the error you're encountering type error object of type in 64 is not json serializable occurs in your slash get related data flask route this happens because the pandas data frames iloc method returns a numpy int64 type, which is not directly serializable to JSON. You can fix this by explicitly converting these values to Python's native int type, which is JSON serializable. Here's how you can update your Flask route. Python at app.route slash get related data, def get related data, eegid equals request.args.get eegid, subids request.args.get subid. If not EGID or not subid, return JSONify error, missing EGID or subid. For untry, df equals data utils dot read CSV, os dot path, train dot CSV. Related data equals df EGID, quotes f eg subid equals subid. If not related data, it is actually working now. Let's test it some more. Yeah, so uh, just needed to make sure the patient ID is being updated when we select a different uh, EEG ID. So we have 61262. Uh, let's check this random one. 7955. Let's go to uh train csv table pop in seven nine five five get too many of those why seven nine five five zero Yeah, 0847. We want to check. Yeah, that will be the patient ID. Yep. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, this one has interesting labels as well. Uh, so let's see, let's just see that everything matches. We have this 9, a 999 nine, rows in the data. So nine labels. Again, highly suspicious. Each one has to, should be 50 second data. So we actually need to make sure this window is only 50 seconds. So this will be zero to 50, and this will be four seconds to 54 seconds which is highly unusual because, as you can tell, there's a whatever percentage, almost 100% overlap. And then you have all these duplicates, 6 to 56, 8 to 58, I think, if I understand the data correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So we really just needed the first that goes 0 to 50 and the last one that goes 26 to uh, 76. And this is unusual. We 
because you would expect the whole data to go to seventy six, but it's going to hundred thirty four. That's not right. Let's check the original. So we have this one as default. It's going to 107. And what's a uh, 62 plus 50? Something is wrong, isn't it? We have 112. No, that's correct. Yeah, so you have uh, 0 to 50, and this one will be going 62 to 112. Yeah. So each uh, of those sub IDs will be. 50 seconds that's by the way means that you only need the first one and probably say if you had 0 and 12 you cover the whole data so you don't really don't need the 18 of them instead of 18 data points you should have just had two because if overall you have a hundred and twelve seconds you essentially have a two fifty second segments yeah you could have had all three of them doesn't matter you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> you should have had three three of them uh, because it should have some overlap is okay, but not this much overlap. This one is like nine, almost like hundred percent overlap. Two seconds overlap out of uh, out of uh, one uh, out of fifty. What's that? Whatever percent that is. So you can could really ignore. They uh, get rid of the sub ID one two or could have just kept. Uh, Yeah, one, say 10 and 17. So you could have kept just 0, 10 and 17 and you would be covering the whole data. The other interesting thing is the label itself. So in this case, uh, can we display the first row as the title? I don't know how to do it in uh, Libre office. Someone knows how to do it. Yeah, since you want to display all this stuff, so we obviously can't change the data. It is the way it is. It was uh, supposedly generated by Harvard Medical School, so yeah, you have to take the word for it. Um, so other things we're not yet looking at is uh, the spectrogram ID. The spectrograms, yeah, there's another data folder for those. I think that. 10 minute files check spectrogram ID unique identifier for the entire EEG recording okay well EEG they, I mean they should um, correspond to one another right well yes There are examples of example figures 
Yeah, this is what the first figure looks like. And as you can tell, yeah, there's something wrong. Yeah, I went over this already. At time zero, you have this uh, a low uh, frequency component, but there is nothing in the time series. I mean, this time series as well because it's uh, time and frequency, energy. This indicates that you should have something in the whatever four, whatever five, ten hertz there. But the the raw EG looks the same throughout, and there were twenty seizures labeled in this data. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're not being quite transparent about this. Yeah, and it's turned into a table and filter being able to filter different components. But which one has 20 seizures in a row? Yeah, don't really know how to use it. Maybe I'll just use Python. So we, we need to display all the data correctly here anyway. Are you still transcribing? Not anymore. Hey, can you look at the two images uploaded? Hey, tell me what the difference between them. One is for ECG, the second one is for ECG, and the first one is for one of the EEG electrodes. Let me know if you see something unusual in it. Yep. I can see the images you uploaded, one showing a graph for the electrode FP2 and the other for EKG. The primary difference is that the two graphs are representing data from different types of electrodes. FP2 is an electrode position on the scalp used for recording brain activity in EEG, while EKG 
more commonly referred to as ECG or electrocardiogram, records the heart's electrical activity. The EEG graph for FP2 shows typical brainwave patterns you'd expect in an EEG reading, with amplitude changes that are generally consistent with brain activity. On the other hand, the EKG graph shows larger fluctuations that are characteristic of heart rhythms. It's typical for EKG readings to show larger voltage changes than EEG because the electrical activity of the heart is stronger than that of the brain. As for the unusual observation in the data set having a large number of overlapping windows, e.g. 0 to 50s, 4 to 54s, etc., isn't necessarily a problem if each window is being used to capture and label different events or to provide context for machine learning models. Overlapping windows can be particularly useful if events like seizures occur as they could start at any time within the larger recording. However, it's important for the labeling process to account for this overlap to ensure the labels are accurate and not duplicative, unless there's a clear reason to have multiple annotators label the same event for consensus or quality control purposes. As for the data fetch, if you're looking to retrieve 50-second windows, the index calculations for the fetch would indeed start at offset SR and end at offset plus 50 to SR which would give you the 50-second data window based on the 200 sample second rate. This is only correct if offset refers to the start of the 50-second window you're interested in. Let me know if you need further clarification or assistance with the data and the visualizations. Okay, so that's the thing about it is that the overlap is only okay well, so much overlap is only okay if the labels are different, but I don't think there was an intention to label them differently. Like if all of these things are labeled as seizures, Uh, that's uh, wrong because this should have been say no seizure, seizure onset, uh, end of seizure, and the quiet after the seizure, which actually seem to be legit in this case. So if those are seizure spikes, uh, they are more frequent, larger amplitude to begin with, then they're slowing down, and then you have a quiet after the storm. So, looks legit. Could be, there is an ECG in the channel, but then there's also the seizure is in it. So yeah, the, it would have uh, made sense as well, uh, potentially. Yeah, this could have affected the, the heart rate. So yes, you could have had a higher a heart rate during seizure, kind of makes sense. In this case, I still suspect something is wrong. I suspect maybe this uh, electrode label is not correct. Yeah, I'm retrieving it all from the data itself. If you haven't checked bionicchaos.com, please do so. 
there's a lot of interesting tools in there well hopefully you will find them interesting as well and uh, don't forget to let me know what you think we take a break and continue this stream or just start another stream by the way the sessions are meant to be interactive so do pop your questions in the chat Yeah, there's no age. Yeah, you would expect the uh, age in there. The patient ID. It's quite a lot of patients. Their IDs are a bit odd. I'm sorry, I was looking at label. Label ID. It's different than sub ID and label ID. Label IDs. That's a good description, isn't it? Label ID. An ID for this set of labels. Well, patient ID is clear. Patient who donated the data. So patients donated the data. Okay. Yeah, the expert consensus, they should have explained how they reach consensus because it's uh, yeah, it's just this majority, majority vote. There's no, uh, in this case, there was 16 reviewers uh, one voted LPD, one LRDA, one voted AVA.
Yeah, this one's really interesting one. It has five voting GPD, five voting AVA, one voting GRDA, and the consensus vote instead of AVA is labeled as a GPD. Uh, yeah. yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it. If anything, you you should have went the default the uh, Ava, so essentially ignore it because you don't want to put the uh, weight on it. I assume that's correct. Yeah, those votes is the count of the annotated votes for a given brain activity class. The full names of the activity classes: uh, yeah, lateralized periodic discharges. Generalized periodic discharges. So this is throughout the whole brain, a lateralized uh, specific area of the brain. Rhythmic delta. So we 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 would be able to see that. C L R D. There's no seizure in here. See what the GPD. So I don't get it. How there were ten seizures labeled, and now and nine G GPDs in the same um, ten minutes worth of recording. Um. Yeah, it looks like there's something happening there in the spectrogram, but it's not visible in the raw data. The ECG is a total mess. Um, LPD. What's LPD again? Lateralized periodic discharges. Yes, yeah, so the lateral area there. No, it's left, right, left lateral, right lateral. Yeah, so there's something, if that's what they mean, um, if the LPDs, yeah, they are lateral. Because they're only happening here and there on both left and right side. There should have been really a distinction as well between like unilateral, bilateral. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily not sure why they break it down this way. We might just take a break and continue in a bit. I'm just thinking we'll just uh, finish the stream if there's no questions, no comments. Everyone is happy. Everyone is probably busy doing their stuff. Um, so I might just take.